And let's bring in senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky along with ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer for more on this. Brian, what's your take on this decision and this criticism that Pierre mentioned that this isn't something that would be afforded a, a regular suspect and why this case might call for a special master? All right, so along with being an ABC correspondent, I'm also a public defender here in New York. And so we as defense attorneys are looking at this and are bewildered at the fact that during an investigation, because a few documents, and we're talking in the motion, they're saying upward of 500 documents relating to attorney-client privilege, as Pierre has said, some correspondence between an attorney, accounting information, and personal documents, about, what, maybe 1,000 documents of the 11,000, so less than 10%. Because less than 10% of those items may not be able to be used against them in criminal court, this all gets stopped? Uh, imagine if R. Kelly was seized, or property was seized in a search warrant, and he gets to stop a criminal investigation of transporting young women and boys because his passport is commingled with that Aaliyah or other criminal artifacts in that search. It's preposterous that someone would get this leeway just because they're a former president. Now, Aaron, the Justice Department said its teams have already reviewed the materials taken at Mar-a-Lago. So how does this infect, uh, affect the investigation and what they've already seen? Well, they can't unsee it, can they, Diane? But this does slow down the investigation because the special master, whoever's appointed, will take a period of weeks, if not months, to go through all of the material, thousands of pages, to weed out what might be subject to the attorney-client privilege. That's sort of ordinary. What's unprecedented here is that the wide power that the judge gave this special master, whoever it ends up being, to weed out materials that could be subject to executive privilege. That's never been done before. Who's to say what's subject to executive privilege? The Justice Department says a former president can't claim executive privilege now, but the judge said she took a different view in part because of the potential harm Trump could suffer if anything sensitive in his possession were to leak out. Hmm. And now, Brian, what legal options does the Justice Department have to fight this decision if they want to? So they could appeal, they could go up to a higher court, but they are in Florida, and that is covered by the 11th Circuit. And so a lot of legal experts are looking at this and saying, is this the wise move? Because the Supreme Court Justice, who oversees the 11th Circuit, is Justice Clarence Thomas. And so from a political standpoint, at least observationally, it's probably smart for Donald Trump to start this argument here uh, in Florida, because if it goes up higher, he probably believes that he has a trusted Supreme Court Justice who's overseeing these arguments and so the DOJ kind of has to decide whether or not they want this decision to be affirmed at a higher court or leave it at a much lower court so it doesn't affect other future cases. So Aaron what happens next? Who chooses the special master? What qualifications do they have to have and what exactly is their role and limitations? The judge will choose the special master but she's asked for input from both sides and by Friday the, the two sides, the Justice Department and former President Trump's attorneys have to jointly submit a list of candidates for the job. So the person will effectively be pre-approved by both sides. She also asked the two sides to hash out the parameters of the special master's work. The Justice Department said there's no role for a special master in this case. The judge clearly disagreed, and so she wants to know exactly what the two sides have in mind for this person to do. That was a question she repeatedly asked during oral arguments last week down in Florida. And also she's interested in the time frame. The Justice Department said whoever's chosen should not have unlimited time to do this because that could significantly impede the investigation. And on that score, former President Trump's attorneys agreed. So what's to stop this special master from either dragging this out for an indefinite period of time or excluding a large, large number of these documents, if not all of them? Uh, that, that we don't know. Uh, it, there will likely be some time frame or some parameters set for the special master's work. It can't go on forever, but it could take weeks or potentially months, given the, the scope of all the documents that are there. And we're not sure what happens if documents are deemed privileged. We know customarily in a criminal case, attorney-client privilege documents would be off limits to prosecutors. We're not sure what the law says about executive privileged documents, and if they're somehow shielded from federal prosecutors, they couldn't use them in a prosecution, that they might fight. All right, Brian Buckmeyer, Aaron Katursky, thank you both.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.